hello everybody. This is Ernie Hatmaker and I'm just going to show you around because there are a lot of things that are going to be going out and I'll be showing you in future um, uploads what I'm putting in in their place. So let's see what's going on out here. So if you're following along, this is my 10 vegetables in 30 days area um, with these pallets and the three um, bluish um, containers. Each one's a different type of container if you notice. This is a more traditional um, flower pot. It's a five gallon. This is a five gallon bucket. And this is a two gallon. Um, it's a bowl. I think it's like a salad bowl. And um, I got it on clearance at uh, one of the, the stores that was getting rid of some of their summer picnic items. So it was like a dollar. And got quite a few weeds growing too but that tomato right there has made it against all odds and I really need to weed the rest of this stuff down but I think I want to put cardboard down since I'm going to eventually turn this into a, a bigger bed um, I'm, I would love to get more pallets and put out here but one thing at a time so anyway this red okra has really um, surprised us through this hurricane uh, wind and, and rain that we had gotten and it's putting on a lot of flowers. This is our Pakistani mulberry tree and there are no more mulberries. They actually stopped producing, I guess, um, early July I didn't see any more berries. But it's still producing tons of leaves and little shoots and things like that. Sunflower Row is really just now, um, some of the sunflowers are hardening off and I'm going to be able to um, take them. Some of them, um, they look like they're ready now, but they're really not. I've tried some. Some are still just a tad bit too soft. And if they dry a little bit longer out here in the heat and sun, then all the work is done for me. The birds don't want to be out here. The uh, the type of birds that you know eat this stuff, they don't want to be here. So I'm fortunate that uh, only meat-eating birds find this place exciting. <laughs> In the coming days, I do plan to uh, do some sunflowers. I've actually considered. Look at that. There's one of the sunflower murderers right there. That guy's huge, isn't he? Look at him. That grasshopper, no kidding, is as long as my forefinger. I don't even want to call him a grasshopper. I think he's like a locust. Look at him. So anyway, these uh, pallets that are stacked here, they're stacked in threes over here. And they're actually holding up uh, some mulch bags right now. We actually got these mulch bags, I think I told you before, for 50 cents. So that was pretty cool um, to, to catch that clearance. These are, well, this is a marigold. Um, and it's the only marigold that survived in this pallet. And this bad boy is huge. I do have some uh, some basil here that's doing so-so. It'll do a lot better once it cools down. But anyway, with these pallets, um, I plan on um, maybe not boxing them in, but I, I thought about putting um, up some pallet wood around the holes on the outside and turning it into just a, a tall bed. I mean, it's already starting to disintegrate out here in the heat and the, the rain. This time is on its last leg. I honestly have been neglecting it. Uh, I don't water it regularly. So, so it's produced another little uh, offset of it, but I need to move all this dead stuff out of the way. You can see we've been harvesting it, but yeah, I've been not taking care of it. Now, in this bed, the only thing that's come up so far, and I don't know if it's because something has been digging in it, but look, bindweed. Bindweed. <laughs> it's the only thing that's come up so far. I think I'm going to re sow it um, with some more bush beans and a couple squash. But um, in the future, I want to make this bed a lot bigger with cinder block on all sides. It's just, you know, right now the edging uh, liner works a lot better for us because we already had it. What's in these A-frames? 
Well, as you can see in there, I've still got some um, strawberries that are left in one square of the first one. This one here, I actually tried to pull the squash out, and the wasps that have made a nest in there told me they didn't appreciate that. So, <laughs> so I'll be trying that again a little bit later. Um, in the meantime, because there's so few squash in there, the nasturtiums are actually starting to take off. I've already cleared squash and zucchini out of these hay frames. And you can see how, oh, look, there's one that's actually growing back off a of stalk. There's a leaf growing off that stalk. But yeah, I cut them all down to stalk. And I'm just kind of um, waiting for um, anything that's, you know, decided to, to burrow into the, um, the dirt. See if it's going to come out or, you know, I might just leave these all winter and use them again for heels later, you know, when more vining plants want to grow. All right, these uh, pepper plants, these are, I believe, um, the other giant Marconis I have. I do have some giant Marconi, um, although they have not gotten <laughs> giant in any form or fashion. They are turning red already. I've never had them before. Just like these tomatoes were all blown off the, uh, the steak, and I probably should take them back up, but I, I'm actually going to tear down some of my tomatoes and focus on the ones that will give us the most food. These snacking tomatoes are great, but they don't lend themselves very well to putting away food. The corn is just about dry enough to pull. The rodents have left it alone for whatever reason. I've got some yellow pear tomatoes coming through. I don't have any more of my uh, regular bell, bell peppers over here. These are sunflowers that are just about to open. Sunflowers, zinnia, something's been eating them, but I see a ladybug here. Ladybugs are always a good sign, right? You can see the Mexican sunflowers and the zinnias there are doing just splendid. And look here, I've got some um, shepherd's purse and some valerian coming up finally through here. And some lovely tall weeds before you get to my um, crowder peas, which are just putting off little vines everywhere. Look at that guy, he's a murderer too. He'll turn into one of those big ugly brown ones that eats everything. Those beans went right up through the tomato, didn't they? So you want to know what's happening with the cucumber? This thing produced um, roughly, I think we got um, 70, 73 or 74 cucumbers. I don't remember now how many we got off of it before it started just kind of tanking. <laughs> not really worth saving if I can't get anything off of it. And the ones it is putting on, look at that. That cucumber's turning into a weird looking, you know, you remember the squillin? It, it kind of has that shape. They're not even, like it's not even trying. It's, it's phoning it in. <laughs> Arkansas travelers. These are the travelers that are in the cage and the wind kind of blew them all out of the cage and I probably need to either cut it back or, you know, do something. There's a few that are red in there, but we harvested a bunch before the wind in case it ripped it to shreds. We'd at least, you know, have gotten our harvest off of it. So we've been harvesting off this thing since um, early July. It's been putting off um, the same, I don't know, nice uh, round tomatoes. It doesn't do what the tomatoes on the, the cattle panels do. Looks like something came over and ate off some of the stalks of the flowers. But because the leaves are still here, I'm going to blame a grasshopper for that. If the leaves were gone and the tops of the flowers were gone, I see it was a caterpillar, corn worm, or you know something like that. See this thing on the ground? I do not like that. I don't have any of my little pins with me right now, my little clips. Otherwise, I would definitely clip it up. The beans, um, I don't know what happened to them. The rabbit could have come by and chewed off the tops. I don't know, but um, I'm going to be getting rid of uh, most of the stuff that's underneath the seeds. All the squash um, that are under here, they're just putting off male flowers or they're, you know, putting off fruit that quickly gets moldy. This morning, Glory is trying to hit the ground instead of go up the CP. And if it doesn't behave itself, it will be cast away. But all this grass, I was going to cover it with uh, cardboard and, and then put um, mulch over it. And, you know, the weather was too bad for that. So anyway, let's go back here. This butternut, we've already gotten, you know, three or four off of it and now it's putting off more. 
which is good. Look at that. There's three right there. And there's one there, and there's more flowers. I mean, I'm letting this thing go as far as it wants to. You know, one seed did all of this. These tomatoes, um, they're doing pretty well. These are um, Cherokee purples that I grew from seed. And they're just now, like, finding their, their way, I believe. I hope they find their way, you know, into making fruit for us. This is, um, I think, a patio tomato that I got from uh, one of the stores. And I don't really like it. Um, they just don't do too well for us. More squash um, from the cattle panels. And if you can see it, it's got a nice thick stalk. And it has come over and literally overtaken my poor little lavender. You can't even tell there's a path here. Now, our golden jubilees, we took off three of them the other day that were pretty nice. But yeah, they turned yellow. This is the first time I've grown them with this bindweed right here. It is literally choking this stuff. Oops, I almost pulled it off the cattle panel. That wouldn't have been good for anybody. So anyway, while I work my way around here, look at that, there's those little tiny white flowers. It's trying desperately to make seeds before winter. These things are just horrible. I mean, they literally came up through the mall. Look at that, there's a little red tomato hiding back there. This is purple basil, and of course I see some weeds down in there. I mean, the wind blows and the weeds pop into the containers. It's like, we can't stop it. These are more Cherokee purple, and they aren't getting that big in this heat before they turn, so they're they're really not uh, doing at all what we want. All of these are Cherokee purple. All right, this peppermint I've had to um, harvest and cut it back. It's going to seed, and it's literally dropping down here. <laughs> it's dropping. Uh, and starting new root and pushing itself into the, the mulch and finding the ground and making making itself at home in bigger places. But, you know, I guess I shouldn't complain, right? Better peppermint than having more of this fine weed that's wrapping itself around my little squash here. And I say little squash because, I mean, this thing's produced a whole lot for us. And we're surprised it wants to keep going. It wants to see what, it, what else it will do. But look at all those little white flowers that are all around here. That's all bindweed that wants to come up inside the, uh, I'm going to have to get out here and find, uh, the main stalks and pull them before this thing produces seeds. You know, that's the downside to the rain. Is I can't get out here. But anyway, check this out. This is where we harvested the cabbage, and even though things are eating it, the cabbage is trying to grow leaves and come back. This is a, I think they're yellow pear tomatoes, and none of them are producing flowers. They're really just kind of scraggly and growing, and and we're probably going to get rid of them. Look at that. I don't even know what that is. It looks like it could be some of my, um, well, shoot, I, I don't even want to say what that might be. I had um, some seeds that were blown in the wind, and that might be some of them. These are some more, um, these are the, uh, what do you call them, Super Sweet 100 snacking tomatoes. And they've been under attack a few times from hornworms, and I'm really surprised how quickly they bounce back. We actually have cut them down some, because they were just going everywhere. These are the Belly Acre Yellow Bales. And we've already harvested all the yellows. They're growing more flowers now, and there's one that hasn't turned quite yet. I see a few holes in the leaves, but because the leaves are still there, I'm going to say it's grasshopper damage. I don't see anything that looks like a tomato in there. That's how I can tell when there's a hornworm in here the easiest way is because it's like pepper leaf, pepper leaf. Oh, look, this one looks like a tomato. How is there a tomato leaf on my pepper leaves, you know? Yeah, dead giveaway. All right, these are um, brandy wines, and I have determined that I will not grow any more brandy wine tomatoes. Um, I'm not in our Arkansas heat unless uh, 
unless I can keep them in a high tunnel. They just don't do good out here. And even with shade, the heat just messes with them. There's something that's you know, kind of webby leaf right there. Yeah, usually after a rain with organic gardening, you pretty much have to, to keep going and keep treating and I need to get rid of all of this. You can see this is stuff I have to clean up. All of these had um, basil in them and, and a little tomato starch, and every one of them burned up in the heat. I have some Roma tomatoes that are in that white bucket over there and they're starting to pop out. So I'm going to have to move them, I think, or they're going to cross pollinate. Want to see what's happening with the deal besides the vine weed climbing up? It's all turned to seed. I've harvested a lot of it. I've got some rooster combs coming out. Some people call them cotton combs. Beside uh, the bed here that I have, um, these are queen lime zinnias. I don't know if I've shown them or not, but uh, yeah, they're a, a beautiful lime green color. Beautiful. But I've got some Swiss chard here. Um, these rooster combs are awesome. There's a weird looking crickety grasshopper -y thing with a long tail that looks like a barb that you stab things with. In this bed, of course, you guys saw us uh, planting more uh, Crowder peas and you'll see the uh, super snacking, uh, what do you call those, uh, the food land, uh, food something. Crawling out of the pallet. I, I know you can't see him from here, but I do. Anyway, um, there's more holes in my my peas. You can tell that the critters enjoyed having that rain come. They enjoyed it. But anyway, yeah, these are the Candyland tomatoes that I put into the bed, and they have just sprawled everywhere. That's one tomato has just gone in like five different directions. And I'll show you the comparison of the one that's in the container. I mean, you can see there are at least, I'd say, a hundred flowers on every little stem that's on here. Look at that, one, two, three, there's about ten flowers per little shoot. Actually, so there's more than a hundred per stem, there's a hundred per offset. Before we go around, we'll show you this patio tomato here, which it gives us flowers and tomatoes now and again. But the main thing it does is just sit here and attract, you know, unwanted insect attention so it's another one that we're not going to do next year finally have some of the mammoth basil coming up again but there's also some, uh, some kind of wild fern growing out of here and then let's look at the palette there's a couple of beans in here but we also put an Alibaba watermelon, and it's growing pretty well. I put two seeds in there, and that one isn't growing so well, so we're just going to let them do their thing. Okay, and now we're over to this side of the palette, and this is the other Candyland tomato. And you can see it's putting off some, some really nice ones. I don't see any bugs on it either, and I'm grateful for that. The chocolate cherry tomatoes have turned brown. Chocolate cherry tomatoes. They look good, don't they? But they taste like plums. They don't taste like chocolate. The catnip is starting off its bumper crop. The seeds are right here. They're reseeding themselves. I'm not doing anything. This tomato was supposed to be in this thing here, and when it blew over, we just let it happen. When we saw it coming up, we were like, hey, it made it. So we just let it happen. There's sage and 
How many can guess what type of plant this is? This is not sage. See the difference? It's sitting next to the sage, but it has long and slender leaves, and it comes up as like a more centralized stalk. Anybody know what herb that is? I also have some shepherd's purse over there. This nasturtium is loving the fact that that squash is no longer here. <laughs> we got our first flower. I mean, the leaves look just pitiful. But look at that one. That one said, I'm going to grow. These banana peppers um, have been dropping their leaves at a rapid rate. Just dropping them. Nothing was eating. The leaves are all still kind of rotting into the ground right there. But now they look like they're bouncing back. It, it's just, the heat is just horrible for them. Look at that. They dropped some peppers since uh, the storm. We're going to go around. So we have um, some uh, Roma tomatoes that I planted from seeds here. And they've come up. I've repotted them now two or three times. And they're doing decent enough. But I've just put them in that container. And that's going to be their final home until they do whatever they're going to do and tank. Now see this? Uh, it's basically a kind of a rubber plasticky netting. Now when we uh, first got here um, to Arkansas, um, I don't know if you remember, we had this in the garden that was behind the other house and it was holding up um, like peas and stuff like that so we plan on putting this up as a kind of makeshift panel or trellis or whatever so that's going to be something that we put up in the future it holds up really well to the, the sun and the heat and all that and um, we also plan on getting a few more cattle panels because they work extremely well for us now I'm waiting to get a few more pallets not because I want to stack them up but, you know, we're still going to make our um, second compost bin, which if you can see is the one, I don't know if you can see it way out there or not. We're going to make our second compost bin, and I want to make the, um, the goat shed. I've seen several of you make sheds with these pallets, and I want to see if we can do it. We can do this, right? Seems really easy. <laughs> so anyway, um, this corn, um, this is... Oh goodness, I don't remember, I have it written down. Um, but uh, one of the seed swaps had some type of indigenous corn, and so I decided I'd plant um, two seeds. And then um, basically what happened, I believe, is another one fell in there that I wasn't aware of. And I could thin it out, but we're actually fertilizing this stuff pretty heavy. You can see, I mean, there's nothing purple going on in there. Oh wow, did you hear that smack sound? There's a robber fly inside the okra. It caught a grasshopper and knocked it out of the air and it landed in here. The grasshopper's pretty much paralyzed. The fly's looking at me. He's waiting for the grasshopper to quit moving. That's a robber fly that's crawling around in there. He just tackled that grasshopper. I'll try to find a video of a robber fly and what they do. It's pretty interesting. He's gonna go back when I leave and, and eat that grasshopper. This is the other bucket of okra. These are all yellow pear tomatoes. And if you remember last year, they grew all the way to the first frost and a little bit past that. But I also have some greens in there that are kind of hiding. So if I have like some caterpillars or something like that, they'll go for the green to leave my tomatoes alone. I hope it works. Oh, I hope it works. Oh, look, there's a yellow pear swarming right now. This is Swiss chard, and it's in a five-gallon flower pot also. This is a yellow pear tomato that is literally just all one stem that doesn't produce anything. But, you know, it's just a lot. And the rest of this looks like uh, some of the wild fern or whatever that's all around on the ground. And I think it kind of shoots up into the pot when the mowers go by. You can see this uh, is what's left of the Crowder peas, which is like one, two, three, 
Yeah, it looks like just three plants in this section. And I may just peel this up. And this time I'll put cardboard down. <laughs> I'll be smarter about it. I'll put the cardboard or newspaper down right away. And then over here with the crossways uh, rows, I've got one, two, three that are still producing. And then in this one, I've got one, that one looks like it's dry. I hate that it rains because I know they're going to be moldy by the time they get dry again. And there's really nothing I can do about it. Um, looks like these tomatoes have gotten so heavy they have pulled down the string. These are all black brandy wines, supposed to be. There, there might be a yellow in there and, and I may have, you know, messed up. But they're doing pretty good. I don't see any worms or crawlies on them. It doesn't mean they're not there. Like, what happened to that? Check this one out. Something happened to it because it's the same age as the rest of these. And this one has a baby on it. These tomatoes aren't doing very well, which they weren't to start with. They pretty much fungus out. <laughs> But uh, there's just a little bit left on the tips. And they're producing stuff even though they're sick. It's kind of strange. Here's the stalk for our gourd. Some of them are starting to turn yellow. And we're going to let them dry out out here as much as possible. There's uh, some kind of weird caterpillar worm thing underneath that leaf right there. So there's probably more. They're going to pretty much eat my flowers off and eat my leaves to the point where my gourds don't want to produce anymore, which would be fine because I'd love, you know, to get the strings and, and wires down. This one's dying off for some reason. Probably the same reason as that, and I just can't see the bugs on it. Look at it. And there, there's no borer or anything in that vine. It's just kind of dying off. They're my jalapenos that won't grow. These are supposed to be mammoth jalapenos, but I've already told you how hostile this, this dirt is here. The soil is horrible here. Now you can see from this angle a little bit better because that, that little fuzzy area is back. I need to have Ed do, do what he needs to do. It's a big buzzer up there. I was hoping it was one of the bald eagles. Every now and then there's two bald eagles that come through here and they just hang out for a little bit. Um, uh, flying over the river bottoms, I'm assuming looking for fish or snakes or something. Maybe even baby deer, I don't know. But, see this right here? This is something I don't like. This is flowering ragweed. That pollen is going to be horrible for people's allergies. And I haven't kept up on them because they grow faster than I can get out here and do anything with them. So this is another one that's going to be um, a bed that I put down cardboard or newspaper or something. But you can see the zinnias. You can see there's a bunch of uh, rooster comb babies that are trying to come out. But at this point... Oh, there's a good way you can tell the rooster comes from the celosias right there. The celosias kind of grow up at a point like that. And the rooster combs are more like sand like that. That dragonfly is watching what happened to that grasshopper. Oh, look at that. The grasshopper is gone. Grasshopper's right there. It was on the other side. And the robber fly right there. I don't know if you noticed, but it's a different camera. I didn't check uh, my battery in the other one and it just kind of shot off because I was telling you how tall these Arkansas travelers were. And I know that you just saw the robber fly because I had to walk back to get the other camera and I happened to notice it in there. So I decided to, to go ahead. So excuse that interruption. You know, I'm, I don't know. I want to say uncouth, but uh, yeah, I don't really have a plan when I bring you guys out here. I'm kind of random, like in person. So that's kind of how my videos sometimes are. And I would apologize for that. I apologize for being me. And don't you apologize for being you. We see these um, Arkansas travelers and they're just spitting out the babies now. And they're all turning on the vine. I don't have to bring any in because the temperature has changed. It's dropped. So we're able to, to ripen them right out here. 
and they taste so much better when they ripen on the vine. And now look at this. These just got just horribly, I don't know, mistreated. <laughs> I, I know what happened to them. They just got too fertilized because we threw out fertilizer for the squash and zucchini here. And I think they just couldn't take it. You can tell um, the difference in their leaves versus some of theirs. And here are more um, tomatoes that we have in, in the buckets here. Um, this purple bell we actually thought was going to die because it drowned soon after it was put in here and it's surviving pretty well. On the other side of the corn, I don't know if you noticed, but I do have some bush beans here in the hamper. So anyway, I would go through here, but I'd be tripping all over the squash leaves. I mean, this stuff has sprawled so much. Um, I don't know if you watch, um, the channel Simply Bloom. It used to be Maya's Garden, I believe. But anyway, um, she's kind of like having the same, you know, fun of discovering that squash is going to just flop all over the place and do what it wants to do and get really, really huge when it's not grown in a container. And most of the squash I'd ever grown has always been in a container. And this time when we put them out the cattle panels, I was thinking, you know, I would train the stalks to go up. They do what they want to do. I mean, literally, I was thinking they were going to go up the trellis and instead they're going all out, just like squash says it wants to do for birth. <laughs> I see a few tiny holes in it, so I'm not sure if there's woolly bears running around here. They probably are. But I don't really, I can't really get in there and do anything because when I'm out here, the bees are out here. So I don't even want a chance, you know, getting neem oil on them. Now these are Black Russian Creme. Um, they're basically miniatures. These things also taste like plums. I don't really taste the difference between them and the Black Princess. So look at, look at that stalk. There's a dying yellow zucchini down there. You see it? It's getting all, all striped. Actually, it's not dying. It's striped. I thought it was shriveled. Now, I'm not planning on uh, going through any of this stuff without a Moses stick because since it rained, I don't know if, if snakes are out here or not, and I can't really tell the difference between what they look like versus, you know, the mulch because copperheads look just like the mulch. So, I'll have to get a Moses stick before I come out here. But I do want to show you um, as we walk around because, you know, the squash is doing what it wants. And you've already seen the Golden Jubilee tomato, and I'm just going to zip over here to where it looks like some vine weed has flowered. That'll produce about 50 seeds. <laughs> here, we'll put it in, in here with the corn because I know that I'm gonna get rid of that soon. This is the green giant tomato. Um, and I've had the seeds since last year. And I've eaten, um, I only planted one in a container. I've eaten one good one and the rest of them had grown kind of small last year. Well, they're growing and it is getting to the point where it wants to climb up the trellis too. I still have um, a few of the uh, Chinese noodle beans. Some of them I think may have gotten the stalks chewed off of them so they're drying on the vine. The vine is literally dying and it's being replaced by the ones that you know we had planted. I had planted basil in this and it, it didn't come up and it could be because you know it was unpollinated seed or or something could have eaten it. It could have burned up in the sun like the other one did. I saw the other one burning. Um, this tomato here, I don't remember what it even was supposed to be. Honestly, I've got it written down in my little planner. But yeah, I, I do not want this tomato again. I'm actually going to rethink my teepees. See how I have my teepees? You know, they're kind of separated, but there's three stands, which would be good if it was just beans. But I think I'm going to put a rod over the top of them and connect it and make it a little bit more sturdy. And I'm probably going to re rethink my path. But all of this, where you see all this, uh, ragweed coming up it's not happening like that again next year they got me this year that ain't happen again nope it's not gonna happen again um from here you can see that um greenhouse the uh pure garden greenhouse that someone had given us the weather is starting to turn in our favor where we won't be burning up everything we put in there so i'm looking forward to that and that pepper plant is the other giant Marconi that we have and it's actually getting big compared to the one that's on the other side of the garden. From here you get a better look of the zinnias and the Mexican sunflowers and the weeds. <laughs> and the watermelon, it's still growing and, and it's not um, getting any bigger than it's supposed to. So I don't know, I would call that a win. And finally, we have the mullein, and there's a little bit of ragweed growing around it. And you can see it, it, it flowered uh, a, a while back, and we've gotten a few of the seed from this one, but we still have seed from all our other mullein that's at the other property that's growing. And I would honestly 
like to line this whole area with mullen but i know mullen doesn't work that way it has a mind of its own so i'm probably going to want to grow it into like a, a high tunnel or greenhouse situation too the compost deal the the other bin that's going to attach to the other side and be left on the ground with just three sides it hasn't um been planted yet and planted <laughs> hasn't been built yet because we have been doing a ton of other stuff this was the wild animal food plot and it's only been eaten a little teeny tiny bit by the deer the grasshoppers like it i've seen mouse droppings here um, where i haven't seen them somewhere else so there's probably a field mouse or something having a good time in there it got fertilized pretty regularly um you can still see there's a little bit of the fertilizer on the, the ground there um there's very few weeds here do you know why there's very few weeds in this because we did not weed this after we planted it um looks like all the beans are eaten off somebody ate the stew out of the beans and left the corn there's some really big ears in there. I don't know how bitten off they are. So with this, when I was doing the tilling for it, I actually had, um, I actually uh, shoveled up some of the topsoil where the, the seeds from weeds might have been planted and put it into um, compost and then threw tons of nitrogen on top of it to the point where it's too hostile for the seeds to grow and it killed those weeds off, but it's also too hostile to use right now. So we're gonna kind of mix it up with some of our repurposed potting soil and let that sit over the winter. And then I think it'll be good to use next uh, season. So this uh, concludes our uh, full garden tour. And um, I know yesterday you saw um, the August 31st update. Look at that, the camera. The wind blew the camera. Um, <laughs> I'm having a hard time with this wind, for real, y'all. Um, so yeah i'm lifting the whole tripod and everything so anyway um i appreciate your time and i hope that you are you know at least enjoying what you watch or skipping to the part that you want to see or something <laughs> my guy's noisy anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time